I'm Rear Admiral Thomas M. Dykus, retired. The USS Wahoo wrote one of the most inspiring pages in the annals of submarine warfare in the Pacific. Her achievement in carrying the war to Japan's front door is almost legendary. In her first six combat patrols, she sank 16 enemy ships and damaged two more. The Wahoo came to fight. Her skipper, Commander D.W. Martin, stated it in one sentence. Sink them all. Dudley Martin loved combat. At Annapolis, he'd gone out for boxing, wrestling, and football. It was during his plebe days that his slow southern drawl had earned him the nickname Mushmouth. In time, this had been shortened to Mush. At 35, Mush was a full commander. His executive officer was Lieutenant Commander Vern Elske Johnsby from Hickson, North Dakota. Unorthodox but deadly, the men of the Wahoo terrorized the Japanese shipping lanes. In the Palau area, during their third patrol, they wiped out an entire Japanese convoy. Sinking a transport, a tanker, and two large freighters. On the way back to Pearl Harbor, with all torpedo racks empty, the Wahoo attacked another freighter with a deck gun. He was driven off by an escort vessel. It was during this action that Mush radioed his famous report. The Wahoo's dispatch has just been unscrambled. Read it. Another running gun battle. Destroyer gunning. Wahoo running. Following his fifth patrol, Mush rode back into Pearl Harbor flying a broom from his periscope like the old Dutch Admiral Trump had done 300 years ago. What's that thing flying from his periscope? Looks like a broom, sir. <laughs> a clean sweep, eh? Now maybe that's something you can write about, Mr. Leaf. Now it's colorful. Isn't that what you correspondents look for? I guess so, Admiral. You get plenty of that from Commander Morton. You may not be able to print it all. Mush is a little short on formality. I can see that, Admiral. Silent service. The men of the Wahoo started their weeks of rest. Joining them in their relaxation was Lieutenant Commander Dick O'Kane, the former executive officer of the Wahoo who was waiting to return to the States to take command of the newly commissioned submarine Tang. A pretty young damsel I chanced for to meet. Give, Give me, me some, some time to blow the man down. <laughs> she was round in the counter and bluff in the bow. <laughs> Yo, ho, blow the man down. Unseen visitor requests permission to enter, sir. Permission granted. Unseen visitor has permission of the captain to enter. Aye, aye, sir. Lieutenant, tell him to come in. So I took in all sail and cried, way enough now. Give me some time to blow the man down. <laughs> uh, good evening, Commander. My name is Leaf. The Admiral has given me clearance for a piece on the submarine service. Ah, war correspondent. Anything you tell me will just be background. It won't be used for publication. Well, gentlemen, the Wahoo's about to be immortalized in print for uh, 20 million readers. Uh, how many readers have you got, uh, Mr. War Correspondent? Well, I never counted them. Well, let's say 20 million then. <laughs> uh, is that all right with you? Anything you say, Commander. No, no, I, I'm more interested in what you've got to say. Are you going to tell your uh, 20 million readers that the Wahoo's the finest boat in the fleet? No. The man says no. The Wahoo sinks them all, and he won't say she's the best. How do you explain that, Mr. War Correspondent? I'm just a reporter, Commander, not a press agent. Well, I've heard that you've got a reputation for being a very good reporter. Uh, do you go along with that, uh, Mr. Lee? I never gave it much thought. When can we get together? 
Well, I, I don't think you and I can ever get together. If you want to talk, I'll be in my room tomorrow at noon. Thanks. I'll see Mr. Leaf out, Captain. Come on, let's see. As I went walking down Paradise Street, yo no, the old man has a little trouble in whining after a patrol. Don't take him too seriously. I won't. Maybe you wouldn't want him as best man at your wedding right now. But in a conning tower, he's as good as they come. I met a lot of good ones in this war, Commander. Last month, I was up in the jungle. They walk in off a patrol up there, covered with blood and slime. It wouldn't occur to those guys to put a broom on a bayonet. And they'd be too tired to do it, even if they did think about it. How old are you, Mr. Lee? 45, 50? I'm 52. That's what's eating you, isn't it? Sure you won't have a cup? No, thanks. Uh, what do you want to know about the Wahoo? Let's start with the record. We just completed our fifth combat patrol, the Curio Chain. We got two freighters, a tanker, damaged another freighter, and a 15,000 ton aircraft transport. Now, what's the total to date? About 60,000 ton. That includes a Japanese sub and a destroyer. Where did you get the destroyer? We went harbor. It's shallow there. We couldn't go deep enough to be safe from depth charging, so I had to get him first. How did you do it? Expose my periscope. He came charging down on us trying to ram. I had a down-the-throat shot and blew a bow off. Now that's a difficult shot, isn't it? So they say. We rewarded the presidential unit citation for that patrol. I understand your next patrol is to the Sea of Japan. Where'd you hear that? <laughs> it's just a rumor. Forget it. If it's true, it's top secret. Don't breathe a word of it. Well, I've been around long enough to know that, Commander. How would you like it if it is true? Hmm. I'd like that real fine. The Emperor's bathtub. That area must be full of targets. Virgin territory. Yeah. I'll tell you one thing, Mr. Leaf. If they send me out there, it won't be very long. That's very colorful. You mind if I use that sometime? Look me up when I get back. Don't forget a new ribbon for your typewriter. I won't. Don't you forget your broom. Anything else, Mr. Leaf? I have a feeling the big story is your next patrol. I'll wait till you get back. The rumor about the Wahoo's next patrol proved to be correct. Mush was ordered to carry on operations in the Sea of Japan, a well-guarded waterway between Korea and the home islands of the Japanese Empire. Because the enemy considered it inaccessible to American penetration, it was often referred to as the enemy's private lake. In August of 1943, the Wahoo entered these sacred waters and immediately made contact with an enemy convoy. Bearing? 326. 326. Angle on the bow? 410. Estimated range? Range? 2,500 yards. Ready to shoot, Captain. Wait. Down scope. Up scope. Shooting observation. Bearing? 338. 338. Range? 1900 yards. Shoot. One's away. Torpedo run. One minute. Five, four, three, two, one. Nothing. What do you mean, nothing? We had his course range and speed right on. It's got the hits. Well, it must have been a sour pickle, Captain. Never came close. All right. 
As soon as he clears, we'll service run up ahead for another try. Aye, aye. Down, let's go. Fire one. One away. Fire two. Two away. Torpedo run, 45 seconds. Thirty seconds. Twenty-five seconds. What's that? First torpedo broke and exploded prematurely. What happened to the other one? Running hot, straight, and normal. Middle of the target. Low order explosion, probably the air flask. Down, let's go. I hear a new set of propellers coming directly at us. Sounds like an escort. <laughs> what do they want with us? We're not hurting anybody. Take her down to 300 feet. All right, let's see what we got. Well, we calculated the target's course and speed right on the nose. The trouble's got to be with the torpedoes themselves. We checked every fish, Brian. Nothing wrong with any of them. That's only half the problem. The last fish ran true. Yeah, but all it did was bang up against the hull and sink. We might as well be shooting with practice torpedoes. You know, it, it might be the firing pin. The impact might bend it before it could set off the charge. There's nothing we can do about the firing pins now, Kevin. Well, we can reduce the impact by setting the torpedoes to run slower. Well, that might help. Might give them better depth control, too. Well, these torpedoes are set for high speed. Let's reduce them to low speed and we'll try it again. Same area, Captain? <laughs> no, no. No, they're looking for us here. We'll move down to the Hokkaido Korea route. Aye, aye, sir. Aye, sir. Give us torpedoes at work, we'll surface and throw hand grenades at them. Down scope. Another dispatch from the Wahoo, sir. Read it. Urgent for come sub pack. Wahoo sends urgent requests. Permission to return to Pearl Harbor immediately. Damn the torpedoes, sir. Order him back immediately. Aye, aye, sir. On the Wahoo 6 patrol, she had sighted a dozen Japanese vessels and fired ten torpedoes. Not a single one had performed properly. Mush's outraged message to the Admiral was understandable. So an irate skipper steams into Pearl Harbor. Ah, they kill you, sir. That's what they do. By the sea of Japan is just loaded with targets. It's a shooting gallery. And what happened? <laughs> Not one sinking. 
Not a single thing to show for our run. Why, it kills you. All right, Namash. Just give me the highlights. I'll get the details later. Well, we planned our speed to get to La Perouse straight at twilight. We made the run at night on the surface. Is the straight mine? Probably. But they got a neutral shipping lane. We went in with our navigation lights burning just like we belong there. They looked us over, that's all. Why, those guys don't even know there's a war going on. We bounced one dud off of Fraser's hull. She didn't even notice it. Didn't any of them explode? Either too soon or too late. One shot was 700 yards. You don't miss at that range. The target only had a speed of seven knots. She's still making knots. Ten fish, Admiral. And every one of them either failed to explode, went off too soon, or headed for the wide open spaces. You didn't fire the rest? No, I wanted to bring some home to see what was wrong with them. Mush, I understand you have your executive officer man the periscope. Yes, sir. Why is that? Well, I, I find it works better for me. I watch the plot and the data computer. That way I don't get trigger happy or scared and fire too soon. But no matter how nervous or how scared Byrne gets, I don't fire until the time's right. It's a little unorthodox. Maybe. It's a good system, if I've got good torpedoes. Tell me what you want, Mush, and I'll get it for you. You give me a load of good torpedoes and turn me around tomorrow. Now slow down a bit. Get your men up to the Royal Hawaiian for some rest. In a week or so, we'll have the first batch of torpedoes with a different firing pin. Does it work, sir? I think so. They're made out of very light aluminum. Besides that, we've got a new batch of torpedoes. The Mark 18 electric. They leave no air bubble trails. Uh, that sounds good to me. I like the idea of no air bubbles on the surface. All right, Mush. As soon as the Wahoo is loaded and fueled, we'll send you back to the Sea of Japan. In the meantime, if you cool off, you'll live long enough to send some more reports. They make lively reading anyhow, Mush. Uh, I was pretty mad at the time. How'd the old man take it? I think he got a kick out of it. But don't tell anybody I told you. There's a correspondent wants to talk to you. Oh, yeah. Good evening, Commander. Hello. Sit down. Thank you. I, um, I hear that you ran into a streak of bad luck. Mr. Leaf, on this patrol, we couldn't fly a whisk room. You can write about that if you like. That's all I got to report. They tell me you had ten torpedoes go sour on you. Yeah, ten. That isn't even a record. The Tenosa had eleven dud hits in a row. Well, Commander, you really can't sink them all, you know. Why not? We're sure going to try. You got an answer for that one? We're going back out there, Mr. Lee. Maybe we'll do it right this time. You can wait that long. I can wait. Good hunting. On September the 9th, the Wahoo departed from Pearl Harbor to return to the Sea of Japan. The Wahoo's orders called for entry into the Sea of Japan through La Perouse Strait on September the 20th. She was to patrol the area south of the 43rd parallel, while the sawfish was to operate above it. After sunset of October 21st, the Wahoo was to leave her area and report as she transited the Kuril chain while en route home. The Wahoo was not heard from again. Any report on the Wahoo? No, Dick. Not a word since she entered La Perouse Strait last month. Will you let me know the minute she reports? Sure. Day or night? Of course. We'll get a message any time now. It'll be a hot one. I'm betting on it. The sawfish got back this morning. Maybe she knows something. Sawfish? Yeah. I'll get right over there. Have you talked to anyone? No, I just got here. There's nothing at headquarters. Let's go below. I saw Mush in Midway in September, just before he pulled out. He was a wild man. Having all those pickles go sour on his last patrol did something to him. 
Yeah, I thought we were going to have to tie him down. He topped off with fuel and got underway on the 13th. I followed two days later. Did anyone get on your tail? A few times. Coming through this strait, a patrol boat laid five death charges around us. Any contact with Marsh after he left Midway? No, I didn't sign him leave. Didn't pick up any radio messages. We cleared the area on the 21st and reached Midway ten days later. They hadn't received any transmission either. Then the last message he sent was the night he entered La Perouse Strait. The last one so far. Dick, there's already been an aircraft search along his route. Nothing. Boats have been overdue before. We'll hear from him. I know much. He's sitting out there someplace right now dreaming up a report. Yeah. It was anybody but Mush. Well, I want to read his report. You wanted me, sir? Yes, Dick. Bad news on the Wahoo. Well, I don't believe... Sorry, sir. I just can't make myself believe it. We just picked up a broadcast from Tokyo. Ward. Yes, sir. Read it. Dated October 11th. Our planes found a floating sub in La Perouse Strait and attacked it with three depth charges. That could have been the sawfish. She was attacked in the strait. The sawfish was attacked two days earlier by patrol boats. Five depth charges. We have to assume it was the Wahoo. Does Tokyo claim to have sunk her? No. Admiral, I... I don't want to believe it either, Dick. But the Wahoo is 30 days overdue. And no word has been received from her since she transited La Perouse Strait. That was over two months ago. I still say we'll get a message from her, sir. This is Howard Lee in Pearl Harbor. A news broadcast picked up from Domi in Tokyo tonight reported a Japanese steamer was torpedoed and sunk in Shoshima Strait with a loss of 544 persons. Shoshima Strait is the historic gateway to the Asiatic mainland. A few centuries ago, Regent Hikiyoshi sailed across it to battle the Koreans. He sent home 38,000 enemy ears pickled in wine. In 1905, Admiral Togo smashed the Russian fleet here. The sinking of the Japanese freighter brings the war to the Emperor's front porch. The only American submarine operating in that area was the USS Wahoo. She is now 30 days overdue and must be presumed lost with all hands. The Wahoo's captain, Commander D.W. Morton, was noted for his terse and colorful reports. This was the Wahoo's final report and her obituary. But in the minds of the submariners who knew her, she will prowl the Sea of Japan forever. This is Howard Leaf in Pearl Harbor returning you to New York. Back in a moment. All submariners had a great respect for the Wahoo, and I want to add a few words about her. She was without doubt our most colorful submarine. In addition to the broom, she used to fly a long pennant with the words, sink the sons of guns on it. If you went below decks, you'd find the same slogan on the locker fronts in every compartment. But she was more than colorful, she was effective. Up to the time of her loss, she was leading the way in destruction of the enemy. Every officer and man was proud of that ship. She had more than her share of that intangible something called a spree de corps. One military unit with it is worth a dozen without it. It was a product of leadership, the leadership of Commander Dudley W. Martin. 